welcome to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I am producer Caleb Baumgartner, here with a Q&A episode with returning guest, schema expert Terry Samuels. Jesse and Terry take a dive into listener questions and give you excellent tips on tools to use to improve your schema and compare it against your competitors. If you're curious about schema and have questions for Terry, let us know at localseotactics.com forward slash schema. Terry will be a recurring guest, so the door is open for more questions. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. All right. Welcome back to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I'm your host, Jesse Dolan, here today with Terry Samuels again. How's it going, Terry? Good. How are you? Doing great. Everybody, I'll just mention to Terry before we record, I'm not going to give the big edification bio on who Terry is. Um, we're looking to have Terry on as a regular guest talking about schema. Uh, I will say, uh, Terry, you're the, the schema guru. I don't know if there's a better title uh, for you than that right now, but that's what I keep calling you to everybody. So, um, uh, if anybody, it's a passion, I think, more than anything, because I like the challenge of it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an area you got to be passionate about. Otherwise, you're going to sit there and just rot your eyeballs for a few days looking at the code and like looking at the matrix. So, um, if anybody does want to catch up, though, I got to pull it up here. We had a previous episode, uh, or I should say session with Terry, we broke it into two episodes. Um, you can go back, check out Terry on episode uh, 76, part one and 77, part two, where we really kind of give a, a nickel tour about what schema is and everything else. Uh, in that episode, we also talked about Terry's going to be coming back in the future, uh, doing multiple episodes to dive a little deeper into schema. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, so everybody out there, a bunch of you sent in questions. Uh, if anybody else uh, after this episode um, wants to dive in and ask some questions that Terry will answer in the future, go to localseotactics.com, go down to the bottom, click on the button for schema, uh, and just send your question in. I've got four of them here today, Terry, I'm going to throw at you. Uh, gave them to you ahead of time, full disclosure to everybody. Uh, Terry's a smart guy, but I'm not going to be putting him on the spot to answer these. Um, so I kind of curated these as well. Some of you had kind of overlapping questions, so I kind of paraphrased some of these. Um, so Terry, I'm going to, we'll just dive right in and, and get the genius off the top here for you. Um, for everybody too, this is kind of a basic question and answer, uh, kind of a schema for, for noobs here. Um, starting at the basic level, I think we'll get more advanced as we go with Terry through future episodes here, but that's the, uh, that's the flavor we're going to give today. So just diving right in, uh, for schema, Terry, first question here says, if I want to do local business schema on my site slash page, should I copy a competitor's and reverse engineer it? Or should I use an online schema generator tool to create this or a plugin slash where do I start, right? With local business schema. So what's your, what's your take on that? Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I started um, kind of like what you mentioned in the beginning. I started scraping my competitors. So, um, and you can Google out there, um, schema scrapers, there's all kinds of tools out there that you can put a URL in and, and basically it'll show you what schema is there. Um, the only thing I caution you on is make sure it's not a schema that you can build with a plugin. So rank math, you know, excuse me, yeah, rank math and SEO press, you know, we actually use SEO press pro. Um, they all have a schema tool inside there. So, those schema tools are the ones that we just consider basic. You know, it's better than nothing, but sure. it's not something you can hang your hat on to actually have it be, you know, improve you in different aspects of your website. So, um, you know, so I, I started by scraping my competitors and then I just started at schema.org and seeing what all the different areas I can put inside the schema. That's basically how I got started building templates. So if I was building a local business schema, I would try to find one to start with out there. You can even go to um, schema.org and they have some examples at the bottom. Um, pick the one that has the most, you know, even if it doesn't, you know, apply to you or not, because the whole idea is to add in the things that the schema let, allows you to add in and then not get warnings or errors when you put it in the checker tool. Right. Because some things in the category from schema.org, some things are mandatory and some things aren't mandatory. Well, nothing tells you what is mandatory and what is not mandatory. Matter of fact, you have another question in here that we'll talk a little bit more about that. But yep. to build it out, you just basically go out and even start at schema.org, search local business, go down to local business, one to the very bottom, and then copy and paste the JSON LD into a text file. And then go back up and start looking about all the different variables you can add in it. 
because you can add in, you know, aggregate rating, you can add in reviews, you can add in all this stuff. Um, and then what I do typically is as I'm building this text file, I'll build it out, I'll check it in the schema checker. If it passes, I'll save it. And then I'll start adding things to it. And I typically do it very small amounts because you don't want to sit there and work in a two hour file and then check it. And now all of a sudden you've got 10 errors and you don't even know where to start. So um, take little bits at a time. So, you know, your geolocation, you can do the geo category. So put that in the text file and get that, you know, make sure that that's approved. And so, and it's just a process. And as you build this thing out for local business, the nice thing about it is if you're an SEO or an agency, then you can just use that now new template on your other competitor sites right. and everything else, or not competitor, but other, your client sites. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, experiment with it. There is all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Um, and then, you know, obviously you can look at my scheme on my site. Um, and then it'll kind of give you the different variables because local business is my site-wide schema right now. Get ready to change, but right now it's local business. Right on. So, I like what you said too about testing it like in those incremental chunks because I yeah. learned that firsthand too. Like you said, you, you invest a lot of time figuring this out. You go paste it in there and it's just like, oh my God, where, <laughs> where did I go wrong? What comma, what bracket, what field? Like, what are you talking about? This is missing. Um, yeah, yeah, man, that's 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 gospel advice right there. Just take it chunk by chunk, test it along the way. Kind of like carpentry, like measure twice, cut once. You're going to save yourself or, you know, or, a lot of time. Or even, you know, if you have multiple monitors, you know, like if I'm at my office, I'll have two text files open. One is the one that's approved and good. And the other one's the working file. Nice. And so even when I end at the end of the day and I go to get on it the next day, because um, one of the, one of the schema projects I'm working on right now, I'm in my sixth day, then I'll open the working file. I won't, you know, I'll obviously open the save file, but I'll be in the working file because that's, I kind of use dot, dot, dots to kind of see where I left off. I do little things to sure. to know where I, it's an old coder thing. You want to know where you, you ended and compare where you don't want to start again instead of going through there and going, where did I start? <laughs> so, oh, yeah, because it's not like working on a web page where you've got sections oh, yeah. and breaks and pictures. It's just a bunch of text on the screen totally. so <laughs> yeah so yeah. i'll either put a dot 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 or i'll do a couple spaces to make sure i have a gap so i kind of know the next day and even weekends are the worst i learned this the hard way come leaving on a friday and not working the weekend and coming in on monday and trying to figure out where you left it off it's just it can be really screwy with you <laughs> right no that's i mean that's why i'm excited to have you talking about these topics again like schema is such a like a different language for the whole SEO sphere. Um, it, this is this is great intel. I think everybody out there listening is probably already on the first question picked up a couple little nuggets that's going to make their job a lot easier. Um, so okay, I think that was great uh, for the first one. Let's jump uh, into the second one. When I look at schema on other sites, I see URLs input with hashtags on the domain, like hashtag org. So it'd be like uh, for everybody, like intrix.com slash hashtag org is what I would mean there. Um, so putting hashtags on the domain, like hashtag org and a hashtag contact, do these URLs have to actually work or do you just put the hashtags in the schema and leave it? Like what's the purpose of that when, when people see that, Terry? Well, the um, the hashtag is, is calling out what your, uh, it's usually the ad ID. So um, I mean, and, and some other stuff. So the ad ID especially. So if you're doing an organization schema, and you're using the website address, the home, you know, the regular website address slash um, hashtag org. Yes, it has to be a live real URL. Um, again, don't Google smart. Don't try to, you know, I got I guy looked at one the other day and it was so keyword stuffed and, you know, and that's just that's just wrong. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I do this stuff because I take a lot of pride. I tell people I build a second website with schema. And so I don't do anything malicious that I wouldn't do on the regular website. So yeah, the links have to work. Um, and then you, you know, cause you can do, you know, the hashtag image. So on your image link, you know, yeah, that has to be a real image and you can't just put, you know, bob.com and have it be go out to nowhere. And you can't use it as a, you know, trying to trick things. So there's a different, when it has a hashtag and then the ending of it, you don't really want to use those typically so often as a um, silo type link. So, but you do want to use it as a page. So if you're doing a service link, 
um, or a service schema for web design. And your web design page um, should be slash hashtag um, service. And then, you know, but you can also do other ones in there that will be links to other web design pages that aren't going to have the hashtag. Right. So the only thing that really needs the hashtag is the main one that goes back to the website. Um, but all the other um, sub URLs or silo URLs or everything, you don't need a hashtag on every single thing. So, and you, to be honest with you, I've got sites out there with no hashtags at all. So um, it kind of just goes to show. So it's, you know, a lot, I do it because I can definitely see the pattern of which ones I want hashtags and then which ones don't need anything at all. And that's typically, like I said, an image URL that makes sense to put a hashtag on that, you know, sure. hashtag image. So, you know, and it just gives a search engine more idea what that URL is. Just so, a little more specific call out on that. Exactly. That it's, thing, just an, it's just an extra call out. It's not like, um, it's not like it works in Twitter. It's not like they're all, right. words. you know, it's not for that. It's just calling out a URL for a specific item or a specific page. So, um, and again, you know, to do it or not to do it, you know, is, you know, you can do it or not do it, but I wouldn't do it and try to fake anything out, you know, put a, yeah. a dead URL or a, you know, URL to time.com, trying to think that that's going to fool somebody. Right you know, on. Search engines. And I think if people are listening, you go like, what the hell are these guys even talking about? Um, refer back to question one, like as far as maybe checking out some competitors or checking out somebody else's schema, you should be able to pull in there and like, you'll see these hashtags we're talking and they go, oh, all right, I get what they're saying now. Like, if this is confusing, I don't want to go super deep, maybe into it even further. But if, if you're sitting there going, what are they even uh, talking about? check out some schema, especially if it's like a local business schema or something else, you'll see uh, some of this in there and, and maybe listen to this back again the last couple of minutes and, and that'll click for you. Um, and hey, I guess what, if it doesn't click, uh, submit a question. We'll, we'll get the Terry answering that deeper on the next one then. Yeah, so, sure. um, all right, next question here. Um, so it's getting an error. Um, and this is quote here, a, uh, the quote meaning this is the actual error here that I'm gonna say a value for the image field is required, end quote. Uh, so it's getting an error, a value for the image field is required when I use the test tool. What value do they want here uh, for that image? I mean, it really should tell you. Um, if you can, you know, even private message me and send me the URL or whatever, but it should tell you what value is missing. Like I said, some values are mandatory, some values are not mandatory. And image, there's only three or four values that are mandatory. So it's probably something pretty simple. Um, you know, it can be as simple as a URL, it can be as simple as a description, you know, but yeah, the, the tool should tell you, it's not going to let you, you know, the only time it lets you guess is when you're missing a, a comma or a parenthesis right. or a bracket, right? you know, because it doesn't tell you where, but if you're missing a field, then it should tell you what fields you're missing. Um, and then you also have to look at it as a warning or is it an error? If it's a warning, like for instance, if you do um, product schema for e-com, if you don't have a review for that brand new product, the schema tool is gonna give you a warning. And that warning is that they're recommending a review. Well, you don't have one yet because you can't put a review on a schema unless it's on the page. So, you know, so again, is it a warning or is it an error? If it's an error, you definitely have to fix it. If it's a warning, it's more of a suggestion um, you should fix it if you can, obviously, but if you can't, it's not hurting you. But yeah, anything that's an error, but a value missing, they should tell you what that value is. You know, value missing URL or yeah. value missing, you know, um, price range. As a, I see price range values errors all the time because some, some schemas you choose, you know, even like medical doctor, you know, they want to see a price range in there. Well, you know, some people say, well, I don't really know the price range. And I'm like, well, then put two dollar signs. You know, you can put dollar signs up there, one through five, if one if they're cheap, five if they're expensive. Um, they're not they're not actually looking like you know two hundred dollars to right. ten thousand dollars. So that's not that's not what a price range is. Like cheap or expensive, generally speaking, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So but that's if it's if it's definitely an image one, like I said, there's not very many mandatory things. It's probably going to be pretty simple. If you can't figure it out, send it to me. I'll show you. I think we should clarify too when we say this uh, with this the error um, and like Terry's saying the the uh, more 
a specific thing that'll tell you where the error is. This is all in the structured data testing tool, mm-hmm. um, which is, as we talked earlier as well, uh, Terry, as you're saying, like test the stuff as you go. Um, that's also in the structured data testing tool. Uh, we'll link to it in the show notes, but if you want to check it out, just Google structured data testing tool. It's a Google tool. It should pop up at the top of the results. Uh, that's what you're running all this through to check your schema to make sure it works. And that's what's spitting out the error um, on this particular question and giving you the guidance that Terry's talking about. So, um, And you might see a thing in there that they're getting rid of it. As far as we've been told, they're not. They just haven't removed that little box yet. Right. So they got a lot of kickback on um, from basically the world because this is really the only accurate tool we have to check this stuff, you know. Right. Um, SEMRUS tries to do it, you know, some other tools out there try to do it, but they don't, they're not going to do it to Google standard. So right. this is Google. And that's one of the things they just got a bunch of backlash about taking this away from us because we need to know. I mean, otherwise we load it up and then we have just wait for search console to tell us we have an error. <laughs> so, that would be know. such a long way around. I can't even, oh, it, would, <laughs> yeah, it would be crazy, you know, especially if you're building something. You know, right. so, um, and I've tried some schema data testing tools that work Google and they're, they're horrendous. You know, they really don't know what they're, they don't know how to compare the schema.org compared to Google. They haven't, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's probably pretty expensive to have those two connect together. Yeah, makes and, sense. But Google built schema.org so to, with Yahoo and Bing. So, you know, they built it from scratch to be able to have this type of system compared to a third party that's just trying to come in and say, oh, you're missing this, you're missing this. And you're like, really? So, Well, I think it's been an awesome tool. Like sometimes we knock on Google. They have a lot of free tools, whether it's be Google Search Console, oh. Google Analytics, and there's quirks. Yeah. Uh, but the schema testing tool is just like, it's just a great tool. Like it just yeah. does its thing. <laughs> it's it just does its thing and it's accurate. You yeah. know, we used to six, eight months ago, we, st- you know, Google the, the testing tool and search console, you would still get some errors through search console and it would pass the testing tool. But it seems to me that's kind of fixed now. So I don't know if it was in the search console side or this side, but Good point. You know, this is like, I, I use this tool constantly. So um, and it's, it's getting to the point that, you know, it's, we now got to the idea of, you know, cause we do so many testing and I'm doing so much, you know, I'm trying to just add fields to see what I can do. You know, that's how we got the keyword field to go into the web page field or the web page schema. So that was big. That was a huge test because I knew we could put keywords into some things. Um, but <clears throat> I just needed to find, I'd rather have it on a web page level than a service level. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of how we use this tool to find out about that. And it's just a matter of seeing if it liked it or not. Yeah. You know, if it didn't like it, you delete it and try something else. Yeah. So, Can it parse it out and understand what I input or not, right? At the end of the day. So, yeah. um, And a lot of people don't know, too, that you can make changes in here. If you get an error, you can make a change in here and hit that gray arrow at the bottom that says validate. Right. <clears throat> and it'll, it'll validate it to see if you fixed it. The challenge of it is, is keep track of what you're fixing in here because it's not on your text file. Right. So um, it does save time if you're missing one comma or something, but if you change the comma in here, you have to make sure you change the comma in your file that you're working in. Great point. Yeah, that stuff can definitely get confusing if you're messing in both. And like you're saying, if you got a, a production ready text file, a, a in progress text file, and now you're making changes in the testing tool itself, yeah, just remember where you're at. Exactly. Just keep track of yourself. Keep Fire track of yourself you every day. Now you sound like my wife. I don't know. <laughs> um, all right. Fourth and final question here for you, Terry. Um, my site is using, again, quotes, air quotes here for those on video. Uh, my site is using inline schema, inputting the schema into the div with, this is something that uh, I should probably screen share. This is horrible to read on audio as, as I'm going through this live here, but uh, inputting the schema into the div with, again, in quotes, item prop equals coding. Uh, goes on to say, in Terry's previous episode, he talked about the JSON and putting schema into the head. I have done this. Do I remove the inline schema or keep it in there if I have the new schema in the head now, right? So Terry, I know you know what I meant reading all that. Again, everybody else, I pasted in there. Um, Maybe Terry, as you answer this, can you explain a little bit like on the difference between like the item prop type schema, the inline 
and the JSON? Is that sorry to put you on the spot, but um, no, it's it's really not. I mean, there's 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 different types of schema. There's microdata. There's um, inline. You know, there's all different kinds of things. You know, JSON is the one that's the most reliable and, the, and becoming the standard. <coughs> but div, the schema inside of a div was kind of like the old school way um, because it was you know microdata is was even the oldest way and it's actually going away. So. Um, the old ways of doing doing schema, and this is where it was really find out that it really didn't do much good. But the biggest thing is that, yeah, it's old school. It doesn't do anything as far as I'm concerned because you can't do what normal JSON schema can do. But the short answer is yes, delete all schema. So, and we even do this with everything. So when we take over a site just for schema only projects, We'll go in and we'll make sure that we get rid of all the schema that's currently there, whether it's through a plugin or whether whatever it is. And you know, the bad part of it is, is when you have some you know div type stuff. This stuff is typically in the code of the website or the code sure. of the theme, so that even gets harder to find. So I had one that you know it was probably hard coded in fifteen different places in the code. Um, and it literally took hours to clear up the original schema just to get rid of it because it was the old div code or the old, you know, they would even, you know, hard code JSON code in there, which you still don't understand. Are you but, talking about um, one of our projects, by the way, just like no, suddenly no, giving me a shot here? Or, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. So, but, you know, the idea is, is that the schema that we build and we use the header footer code manager plugin because it gives us full access to dictate where exactly we want that schema because we stack schema on, on the inside pages. And when you start stacking schema and you don't have control of what you're doing because of your div codes or item prop or whatever, um, it's just good to get rid of all of it. And again, use the data checking tool. So if you have items in there now and you wipe it out, check it again. You want a blank slate because yeah. The problem with not having a blank slate is when you load up custom schema or advanced schema and you already have some schema that's in the theme or some schema that's in Yoast or whatever, you're going to get duplicates. And duplicates might not cause an error, but they're not going to give you the credibility that you need as you build this thing out with schema. So you don't want to have two web page schemas on the same page. You know, it's not like you, it probably won't come up as a warning or an error, but it's just smart practice. You know, just keep your schema clean. Um, and then like with Shopify, Shopify automatically puts stuff in. So, um, and we, I just found out about this because I was hired to do a Shopify site. And so you put in a product and Shopify automatically builds the product schema. Well, you've got to go into the code of Shopify and overwrite that. And it's a major pain in the butt. Um, just because it's automated into the theme, we don't have access in Shopify to the main build out theme, obviously. So you just have to remember as you're working in some of these um, platforms like Shopify, or um, I heard um, Joomla has the same type of problem, um, but I'm not real sure. I'm not a big person with Joomla. I don't mess with it. But um, in the Shopify part, you just have to remember that you have to manually either copy and paste and override the current schema or delete it and then put yours in. So otherwise, you know, you get two product schemas and those will cause a duplicate error from Google. And then you'll be going, what do you mean? I just put it in the one page. Right. Well, you didn't see what the platform did automatically. So everybody's trying to get on the schema bandwagon. And so the challenge of it is, is it's the same schema you would get from any plugin. Where our schema is different is we do the investigation of the stuff of the business owner, of the brand, of all the stuff that a plugin is not going to do. Yeah. The plugin is just looking at the web web page or website itself. It's not looking at, you know, all the different accolades Salterra or Intrix has. You know, it doesn't go out and find the awards that you want. It doesn't go out and find the, you know, you just, you know, you have a Dun and Bradstreet, you know, location. You know, you have a BBB type link. You know, those are stuff that these tools don't find. Yep. And that's the stuff that builds the trust within the schema for Google. You know, that's the gold. So 
Um, and so, yeah, so the first thing we do is just stop whatever schema is on there currently, and then we'll load up ours. Always doing the site wide first, and then the site wide can control everything as we're building the rest out. So. I think you make some great points there too. I mean, it's just like anything else. I mean, you get what you pay for slash if you're looking for an easy push button solution, uh, like if it's just like a website theme, if you're just going to roll with some pre-made WordPress theme and not customize it, guess what? Somebody yes. else has that too. And you ain't mm -hmm. standing out. I mean, is it better than nothing? Okay. Maybe, but if you're, if you're looking to make an impact, like it's an investment to do something for you. There's got to be something that makes it unique to your business, just like everything else with your business. You're not using the same logo somebody else did or the same, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, insert thing there. So I think that's really good insight for people because I think schema can be super intimidating and complex. And if you're going to do it, you just have to either hire a professional, you know, where needed or a consultant or understand like, well, that's just the way it's going to be. You can't just make it easy and cookie cutter. Uh, it's just the nature of it. If you want results, I should say, exactly. if you want results. So, and, and that's the whole thing, you know, you have to make a decision. Is, is schema going to be part of your, um, you know, everyday package that you do for your clients, you know, and if it is, then do the schema that's going to help not don't right. do the schema that's just going to be schema, you know, because, you know, I mean, it's amazing. Some of the stuff that we show our business owners of the schema, <clears throat> you know, like I said, we put stuff in the schema, they probably will not, will never put on the public side of their website. Right. It's either too much information or, it's, you know, whatever, but we put it in the schema just because we know that the more stuff you mentioned about the owners, the brand, you know, the URL and all the links from the URL into you, then that just builds trust and authority. That's the bottom line. And we've seen that over and over again as we do these massive projects and, you know, and I think it's the, the easiest, well, easiest in relative terms, as far as manipulating anything right now, as far as, you know, on page is, you know, I'm an on page guy. So it's part of on page. It's, and like I said, we've got a lot of sites out there, just on page and schema. I've got a site out there with just schema ranking, no, even nothing even else on this site. So, we know that the schema works. <clears throat> now it just depends on how much you want to get into it and make it work. You know, so um, you know, I don't use any plug-in schema at all. You know, none. And you know, the big reason is is so like Rank Math puts in you know header schema and footer schema, and it's really you know clean it up. You know, that schema is not doing you any good. It's not like you're doing schema so. You know, some guy told me, well, so Google better understands the website. Well, Google knows it has a header. Google knows it has a footer. Google, I mean, it's that's not the stuff that ranks a website. The stuff that right. ranks the website is the content within the, you know, the parentheses. Right. You know, it's not just saying, hey, we have a header and here's our logo. Well, great. You know, that's that's no surprise. It's not like any other site in your in your competition doesn't have that. They just don't put it in schema that way. Right. You know, Yoast does that. So, you know, but the biggest thing is, is if you take the, just make the decision to go down the advanced schema road, then go down it, you know, build your templates, build your libraries, you know, make it part of your SOPs. And, you know, when you get on a new client, pull out whatever library is close and just copy and paste the changes. Do start doing your research. And, you know, next thing you know, I've got 600 and plus template files for schema. So whatever I want to go after or whatever comes at me, I know I've got to start. Do, does it mean that's of the end all be all? No, because the, the most up-to-date schema is on my website. And so, you know, and my, but my website isn't for a plumber. So I would still have to pull the plumber schema down, the right. template and add in all the new stuff that we know works on my website. So. My website's the testing thing. So it is because I figured if I'm going to test a website, I might as well test the website that already has traffic, already has ranking, you know, and right. I can see results quicker, you know, or, works. or yeah, results good or bad. Yep. Good so. testing method. And I think as you're saying too, I'm thinking in my head, you mentioned like other agencies. And I know there's a, there's kind of a mix if it's 50, 50 or otherwise of, of you folks listening out there that are uh, learning SEO uh, learning from Terry here uh, to apply it at your agency. Um, but then there's also a good mix of, of you listen and we know that our business owners, 
And I think this is something that maybe more agency people or SEOs are comfortable with as a discussion. But if you're sitting there as a business owner or a marketing manager, like, how do I even begin on this? Uh, I think I'd circle back and tell you, go, go to that testing tool, pop your website in there. Yep. If you're not seeing, uh, if you're only seeing like, uh, um, you know, site-wide schema or not any location, um, um, business location, or I'm sorry, local business schema. It, you know, if you need some help interpreting that, reach out. Uh, we can let you know. It's if if you don't know this stuff, it's going to be a foreign topic. Um, but just start with testing. Is there schema on your website before you worry about some of the complexities here? Um, if there ain't, uh, you need it on on your website. You should definitely be yep. be reaching out and getting that done. So. Um, uh, Terry, I think that's awesome. Did you have any other closing thoughts? Otherwise, that's the four questions we wanted to cover. Nope, um, I'm, I'm good. I'm um, looking forward to our next session. Like I said, I'm an open book, so ask away. Um, you know, I, if I can recommend something, you know, just let me know. You know, I've had some people contact me about some oddball type websites and, you know, what schema do you recommend? You know, I mean, so, you know, no problem. Just, you know, reach out and we can, you know, see how we can help you and then, I, I love these things. I look forward for the next batch of questions. And yeah, um, you know, it's like I said, this is a passion of mine and we, we test it all the time. And so, you know, uh, not that I wanted to become a guru at it. It's just because <clears throat> I've been doing this so long. It's kind of a, even though I've been doing ske advanced schema for over a year, it's still new to me because like, you can still go into a different competition, you know, a different competitive market, a different town, different yeah. city. They're all, they're all different, you know, so. Um, and, and it's evolving finding, too. Oh yeah. You, you know? know, and so we're, and we're finding little tips and tricks, you know, that work in some places geo relevant that don't work in other places. So, you know, it's also not a cookie cutter system. Right. You know, that's why I said that there's still the same amount of investigation goes into the project. The building the actual schema out is the easy part. If you have a template. Right. You know, it's the actual research you need to do or you should do to go out and make this schema blow people's minds, you know, as far as what what the search engines are going to be able to see about you or about your brand or about your, you know, your partner or whatever, you know. So um, just, you know, be serious about it. Don't just half ass it, you know. So well, I hope everybody listening, I've got a few more questions already saved up uh, for our next session. Uh, but again, like I said, on the front side, if, if this spurs anybody to have more questions, or if you're like, dang, Terry was almost there, I want him to dive deeper, like whatever's in your craw on the schema, schema topic, uh, go to localessiotactics.com, bottom left, click the button for schema and uh, uh, drop a question in there. Um, we're going to dive deeper into this stuff. We're, we're trying to start a little more basic into some of these questions and get deeper and deeper as we go. All right. So with that being said, um, I'm going to read our, our five-star review here for this episode, Terry. Uh, we got a great review here. This was from, through our GMB, actually, through Google Reviews, uh, from John Diaz. John says, these guys are really great and know what they're talking about. The podcasts are a huge help to all beginners looking to get into SEO. Um, appreciate that, John. Uh, that's what we're trying to do is just share knowledge, try to demystify some of this help you guys out again like we said earlier uh, with terry whether you're a local uh not local but if you're an seo agency uh looking to do this for your local clients or if you're a business owner or a marketing manager or whatever uh doing this for your own brand your own website uh hopefully you're getting some good nuggets out of here learning things like this with schema uh that are a little bit more advanced uh that you can apply but uh, hopefully they're just actionable advice uh that you can take out of this um and like a great two-way dialogue right like if, if you didn't get actionable advice like tell us what you're <laughs> Tell us what advice you need and we'll get it to you. We'll get it to you on the next one. So uh, appreciate you hanging out, Terry. Uh, looking forward to the next one and uh, we'll keep on rocking. So, all right. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Take care. See you guys later.